and welcome back to Ballaholics. We got Koosh and me back at it again, covering Binghamton basketball. Men's basketball uh, season ended about a week ago at 10 and 19, missed the conference tournament, last in the conference. Just from a look at that, it looks bleak. It does. It, it does. looks bleak, but when you look at it a little bit more, we look at you know the in-depth, we got George Shinsley, Brenton Mills, both making rookie all-conference teams. Sam Sessoms, all second team, and last year was all first team. But Sessoms led the league in scoring and in assists. So, I mean, this team, and he's only a sophomore, you got two freshmen who are all conference. You got a sophomore who's all conference and led the league in pat, or assists and points. I think, am I crazy to say that next year will be better? What do you think? I think. Yeah, based on what I'm seeing right now, it looks like we're probably going to get much better at this rate. They just got to keep up the training. It looks like they also need to work on some more, um, maybe like maybe like they need to work more on their teamwork as well. Well, we build I, that connection. Well, it's going to be hard when, when in, in a season like this, and the, and the NCAA season, the college season, when there's so much turnover from year to year. I mean, this year you lose a bunch of seniors, you lose a bunch of upper class, and you only have two seniors on the team. I get where you're coming from, like that team leadership, but I think next year, Sessoms being the junior, he is the leader of the team, uh, especially with Rich Caldwell leaving and Pierre Sarri leaving. I think he's almost certainly the leader. No one's going to debate that. Of course. So I don't disagree with you that it is a bit like the leadership from a perspective of like an older guy on the team maybe was lacking just because they didn't have enough guys. Simply because they didn't have enough guys. That's not taking anything away from Caldwell or Sar. Um, but I think going into right now, Tommy Dempsey's last year on, under contract, their head coaches, you know, last year under contract, this is going to be one of those years where, you know, it's, it's a prove it year for him, for sure. I think, I mean, most people, obviously, it's, the expectations aren't huge for Binghamton basketball, but at the same time, if you're losing, if you're last place in the conference, it's not a good look. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're trying to say. Mm. <laughs> Something's happening my laptop, don't worry about it. Um, but no, I, I'm just thinking, like, overall, this team is young. And I know we keep saying that, and if anyone's watching, they're probably thinking these guys are on drugs. They're <laughs> just, you know, assuming the best of this team. And to an extent, I kind of am, because you can't get worse than what we did this year. Of course not. You really can't get worse. And I, I'm trying to be realistic and look at the fact that most of our team is fresh. Most of our team are sophomores. You know, it's young guys who, uh, to, to an extent, I don't know, are new, new to this. New to this, you know, college basketball thing and, and played limited minutes. And, I mean, I, you don't see that around a lot of mid-majors. No. Especially at a school like this. Um, so, I think going forward, you would assume they'll get better. And they are. They're going to get better. So yeah. we, we just got to wait and see. Just take that I spectator mean, yeah. approach and see how it comes along. I mean, yeah, there, That's all we got to do. There were bright spots down the road, like that close win against UMBC. I mean, you were yeah. beating, uh, what was it, Hartford 26-2 um, to within five minutes. They ended up losing that game. But, but that was a crazy game. That was a crazy game. But they I played think, their hearts out. I think you look at that type of game and you realize that's a heartbreaking loss, but – with a team that is, is, as we've been saying, like this young, I know we've said it 80 million times, but I think that's one of those games where you kind of expect them to lose. You know, you, they get to that lead and they don't necessarily know, not necessarily know how to play it, they actually know what they're doing, but it's, it's one of those things where you don't necessarily know how to protect the lead um, as well as you would if you were a team full of seniors. You know, a sure, team, sure. a more experienced group have, who have seen that a million times. Um, so next year, let's make some predictions for next year. Of course, yeah. All right, let's make a, I'll, I'll start. Hot take, not even a hot take. Sam Sessoms, conference player of the year. I can see that. He's going to be a favorite. He will be. He will be a favorite, I think, for sure. And if this team gets better, if this team is, is, gets any home games in the conference tournament, it'll be because of him. And he'll be the best player on the team. So, I mean, I think it would almost certainly have to go to him if you were if you can even do what he did this year with the leading the conference in points and leading the conference in assists. I can see that definitely with because your, Yeah, well, we'll go on, yeah. Well yeah, because like based off what I've seen him play in like real life, he shows that dedication, he shows that like actual experience that he brings on to the game. 
he shows the leadership. He has he yeah. has what it takes to become the number one in conference next year. So yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. What would you, what would be your prediction for next year, like record wise? Like, at a, if we're playing 29 games. games, playing 29 games, how many games do we win? We won 10 this year. Okay, I think they we have a real realistically speaking, we have we can make it to at least 17. I'm I'm confident with 17. I think. I think we improved that this year. It's, it's hard yeah. to decrease. I mean, obviously, I think next year I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm say being twenty and nine next year in the regular season. All right. Um, obviously, with that record, they would make the postseason and probably even have a. Um, uh, they would probably even have a home conference game, which would be amazing because we can go to that, cover that. That'd be amazing. So then, obviously, you add the whatever. I think next year. With Vermont losing Anthony Lamb and a lot of their, you know, seniors, obviously they're the star studded program and even Stony Brook is better than us, although we've beaten them in, you know, key scenarios. Um, I think next year we could make a run for the title, but I mean, it's when you're last in your co- conference, it's hard to say that. It's very hard to say that, but this team is posed to make a jump from this year to next year, I would say. They definitely have a realistic chance, that's for sure, yeah. All right, so this is, this is for Cushion Meek covering Binghamton men's basketball for the last time in the 2019-2020 school year. See you next year.